All right, a highlight for any day, but especially uh, a day where we see a lot of icebergs. We show green icebergs as buyers. I know that is black, but red ones as sellers. Just really quick, the amount that has traded so far would be in this number. So let's say a guy did 1100 Then there's a space or a slash, another one. And then there's this third number, which is how much he's showing. So Dave is able to show how much he has done so far, how much he might have done at another price, and how much he's showing. We don't know how many he has left, but we can anticipate or accurately assume by how much he's showing that he's probably got 3,000. Now, 3,000 is the max amount of size that an iceberg is allowed to do. How do we know that? Because we've never seen one bigger. Never. So there must be a governor on that where you can only do 3,000 with an iceberg. That's what the three digits show you. How much he has done so far, how much he might have done at another price, and how much he is showing. Now, how much he's showing is important. If he's showing a one lot, he probably doesn't have even a thousand. He probably is already filled pretty quickly. If he's showing over 50, we have found that greater than 50 is above average. So he's probably got above 1500 to do. Now, remember, 3000 is going to be the max. Now, what happens when there's a the market is aware of a big order, whether the whole thing is showing or it's an iceberg where only a piece is showing in this case, only 100. What you get and what you used to get all the time in the pit when everything was on the trading floor, it'd be easier to see this and hear it than it is necessarily just watch it on a screen. But the same dynamic exists. And that is when a big broker who is not a big broker, but a broker who is bidding for big size at a certain price, let's say that price is just two bid and he's bidding 2000 contracts. So he's yelling two bid, 2000, two bid, 2000. And let's assume 2000 is a really big order. Now, locals, who, who's what traders were called locals that are in front of the um, pit. That's kind of like a pit and there's stairs on each side where the traders stood. And then there was um, brokers that were on the outside the perimeter. But anyhow, one broker was bidding two bid 2000. We assume that's a big price or a big order. The traders that are all in the pit, technically trading just shorter term day trading type, just like many of the people that are, are watching this or listening to this are two bit 2000. They know it's a big order. What will inevitably happen is if this, big order if the big order is going to hold the market up price will go down to it it'll initially hold it up and you're going to get this rally they want to they want to buy it once they see it's a big order and then lean on it and i'll explain what lean on it means in a second the anticipation is hey there's big buying down there it's going to take a lot to move us through there so the initial thought is you're going to get a bounce and often you do then you always get people who are late to lean on it. Price comes down to retest it, retest it, retest it. And then the guys are going to get long and lean on it. Lean on it means if it's a big buy order, which this is, they're going to lean on it and open a position long. Remember, after you're long, you are now a seller to cover that long position, right? If you're a seller, who do you look for to get out? Sellers have to find buyers to get out. So they look for buyers. So the thought is, well, we got our buyers. We got this two bid 2000. So I'm going to get long and lean on all those buyers from two. So you get that action and you generally create a big a push up. And then the next rotations down to it. 
you get people that get too long, too many people leaning on that order. And once they start to chisel through it, the people leaning on it are like, well, should I sell it now? No. Should I sell it now? No. Should I sell it now? No. And all of a sudden it's gone. It's filled Two offer. Ones are trading. You're like, damn it. I missed it. You always get when there's too many people leaning on a big bid order. You always get those who waited too long, miss it. And now they're chasing. And when there's too many leans on a big order, long, long's leaning on that big buy order. You get the follow through. So once it gets through that big order, the market will look like that. That's the interaction between orders and price based on other people's positions. But you have to understand the concept of after you're long, you're a seller and sellers need buyers to get out. And if I know there's a big buyer standing next to me, I want to be long three. So I know I can only, I'm probably only going to be able, I'm only going to risk a tick because I can get out at two. So it's like baseball. They know where they're going with the, with the trade. Worst case scenario, they could just throw it to first base if they don't have the force out at sec. Why could they throw it to first? Well, because they got a bunch of buy buyers, this one guy, 2-bit 2000, that they could go to and say, hey, John, sell you 20. So you get long at three. You become a seller. You hope to sell it at five, six, seven. But if these two start shaking, if they start trading, I'll sell it to John. John, sell you 20. And now my risk is only a tick. You hope. If you miss the twos and there's a lot of people leaning on it, the chase is on. You get the follow through. When you get and there's a there's a a whole nother way to build scenarios out as to when it crosses back over, why that becomes pivotal when they move an iceberg or a big order. That I don't want to get into, but just the understanding of a lean, just think about the lean is the two bit 2000 order. And think of that being a wall and you're leaning on that wall. Well, when that two bit 2000 starts to trade and they start hitting it, the wall starting to fall over. And if there's a lot of people leaning on that wall, there's a lot of people that are going to fall over. What are they? Sellers. If there's a lot of sellers falling over, missing stuff, price is going to go lower. That's what a lean is, always was. When a big order came into the pit, people would get long, leaning on those twos. When the twos went, and they would even try to buy twos. Guys yelling, two bit, 2,000. You're yelling, two bit for 10, two bit for 10. I know if I could get long at two, I could get out for a scratch with this knucklehead who's trying to buy 2,000. So the same dynamic occurs. It's why price will initially bounce a lot when a new order appears and why they start to chisel on them. The people who are late saying, oh, big buyers, he must know something. Big buyers, he must know something. So they all get long, and then when they try to get out with them, it's gone and there's follow through. That's when it becomes a big, yes, like this, someone had just said that we had a big short that came in. Oh, you guys can't see the chart. Um, we had an iceberg that moved down. There's, when, when, when the iceberg or big order moves down, and mostly you see that in an iceberg and not a big order that's showing the whole size. When an iceberg moves down and it's a buy iceberg, prices generally follow it. Once they fill it, once they get back above it, that's generally bullish because they just shook out all the longs. Now we could go up. It's that dynamic that you got to understand it's, it, it, and then build on that with the tools that you look at to make it easier. Trading is never going to be easy. But there are things to make it easier. And then there's a lot of things that you have to point to. Hey, I'm doing this and this is stupid. I can't do this. I've said this before, and it's really important to know that there are a lot of things people do when they trade their own account that they would not even be allowed to do if they worked in a professional prop environment. So it's not like day traders in a prop environment are much more disciplined. It's just that there was no chocolate cake to eat. Well, look at those guys. They're disciplined. They don't eat, you know, they, they stay on their diet. 
There's no chocolate cake to eat. There's no temptations to trade bigger than you should, to add to a loser, to take shots, to do things that are sabotaging what you're doing and then look back and say, wait, let me just, maybe I'm not successful if I cut this stuff out, but boy, I got a better chance at it. So there's just in a prop environment, that accountability didn't even allow you to trade bigger than you were supposed to trade. Couldn't do it. Physically, you couldn't do it. You couldn't add to your position. If you were taking shots and being stupid, someone come out and visit you and, and kind of rein you in. So it's not like there was better discipline or they were just more like uh, soldiers with that kind of, it's just that the chocolate cake wasn't there to eat to get off your diet. So when you trade your own account, which is most people, you have to go in knowing that there's got to be a really stringent, firm accountability that if you do stupid stuff, which we're all going to do, you recognize it sooner rather than later, and you don't stack the boxes of stupid SHIT. And I know I'll get off track with this, with this lean. It's but the dynamic of where are you going to go with it? And if the market's going to try to go and sell these twos when they start trading and people are leaning long, they're leaning on this big order with a long position. Once it goes, it goes. When it goes, here, let me clear this. Let me clear this board here. When it goes through an iceberg, when the market sees there's more than meets the eye and hangs around it, it's going to go through it. When it hangs around it. When it sees it quick and, and runs away, you got to be quick. But that's when generally it's going to be a magnet to come back down to it. But let me just cover what happens when it doesn't follow through. When it doesn't follow through, one thing it did accomplish was it shook out longs. So if there's less longs, if there's X amount of longs and now there's less longs, there's less sellers. And that's what's needed, less sellers for price to navigate to the upside. So what the iceberg did was it gets people leaning on it long. Those who are long are already leaning on it. When it goes, they get stopped out. They're no longer long and price could rally. That's how you could gauge whether or not there's enough longs that are stuck to continue price lower. To go lower, you need people constantly getting stuck long. Unless there's just super negative news, then you just invite all this selling in and it just rolls the market and people who normally would want to buy stand on the sidelines. But for price to continue to move lower, you have to continue to stick people long. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You get long, shoot, I got to sell it. You get long, shoot, I got to sell it. And those that add to losers on down days is when you don't get away from it. And, and one thing I want to make mention is every time markets get volatile, if you are doing things that aren't smart or, or weak, you're, there's a ten, you tend to have a weakness. That's going to get pulled off like a Band-Aid. And it's going to hurt when markets are volatile. That's what's going to bring a lot of your um, weaknesses to the top when prices are, are really cooking. So if you take shots and the market's slow and you're just taking, you know, you get mad and sometimes the market will be more forgiving. When you start getting mad and taking shots, when the market has 80 point ranges, 50 point ranges, it's not going to let you get away with those bad habits. So it's more forgiving with bad habits when it's slower and less forgiving. So we're, we've been in a period the last couple, three weeks of an uptick in volatility. If you were getting used to or getting away with stuff before that, you tend not to get away with those things when the speed of the market picks up. But just going back to a lean, understand what a lean means at its most basic level, how longs are sellers. And if, they, if they're getting long because they see a big buy order, that big buy order is what you need to get out of your long because you're a long and you're a seller. If you're a seller, you need a buyer, you got a big buyer. It just like physically in the pit. If you were standing next to that guy bidding that big order, 
then it was easy access for you to say, John, sell you 20. Some guys might even say, hey, save the last 20 for me. Now, I don't know for sure if that happened, but I'm sure it did. I never heard that happen, but I might might have said that. I never traded big enough or long enough in the pit and develop a relationship like that. But you might go to the broker, hey, save the last 20 for me. But the idea of knowing where you're going with it, like baseball, is important. So a big buy order comes in. People get long ahead of it saying, I could get out with this guy. Too many people are long. Then there are going to be a lot of people that miss getting out with that guy. And that's when you get the follow through, through the order. So step one is to recognize these icebergs where they come in and how much they probably have left. And then the dance between price and the order. Then the other thing that we, we add is actually seeing people get long ahead of the order. A sample size of that. Hopefully, hope hopefully this helped. Just explaining, focus on the lean and why people lean once they see a big order. What that all means. If anything else in this this recording helped you, fine. But at least that that's the whole intention. The lean on a big order. Does that help? The lean on just the dynamic of what that means and why you get price to interact with big orders. That's order flow. That's reading order flow. Not going back and saying, oh, he's a big buyer. He must know something. How many times have you seen big buyers buy it and markets just keep going lower? I've said this so so many times. Big buying comes in doesn't mean they're necessarily bullish. They could be putting on a spread. They could be hedging some sort of bearish trade where they got to buy futures. It doesn't always mean they think this price is cheap to buy it or they're bullish or they know something. So it's the price interaction, how they react to big orders that just come in is the real-time read.